Welcome to Nuclear Chemistry Part 4. Here we will look at um, the different unit systems that are used to describe nuclear decay. Let's get started. All right, so the biological effects of ionizing radiation um, can lead to damage of our DNA, causing genetic mutations um, by breaking the phosphoester bonds close to each other on opposing strands of DNA. And so, um, because of these um, biological effects, alpha, beta, positron, gamma, and x-rays interact with matter, causing ion formation. And so, that's why they're described as ionizing radiation. Okay, and so, um, we have to look, we've, we've noticed that there's different types of energy, different penetrations and things, and so these different forms of radiation will have different biological effects. And this is going to lead to a variety of unit systems and measurement techniques for um, monitoring what kind of um, radiation dose we're being exposed to. So the first thing to keep in mind is that um, there's two primary considerations. One is the type of radiation, and then we have the penetrating power. So let's look here. So as we've learned, so now alphas, this is an interesting paradox, they have right mega electron volts. So electron volts is just another um, energy unit. So we see that alphas actually have the highest energy. However, at the same time, they have the weakest penetration. And then as we look at betas, they have a slightly lower energy capacity and, um, excuse me, higher penetration. And then when we get to gamma rays, notice, or excuse me, x-rays, notice that x-rays can be stopped in lead. We need at least a half a centimeter. And they have, because they do have lower energy, and then there's their penetration. And then last but not least, the gammas, um, mid to high energy with deep penetration, right? And so then there are the gammas right there. Notice that we would take 10 centimeters of lead to stop, okay? So the gammas have right, the greatest penetration. So it's important to recognize the amount of energy and the penetration are not necessarily co correlated with each other. And you want to know the relative um, penetration ability of each one. Now let's look at how we measure radiation. So um, I think we've all heard of the Geiger counter. Um, officially called the Geiger-Muller counter. And basically, this um, is similar to solution chemistry, except now our solvent is the air instead of um, water or a liquid. Electricity is conducted um, through gas that contains charged particles. So remember that we call this ionizing radiation. So the beta, um, x-ray, and gamma rays, right, they can penetrate this window. Okay, re and remember, so alphas can't, right? So a Geiger counter is not a good way to measure alphas because the alpha particles will get stopped in the window. But the beta particles and the x-ray and the gamma rays will be able to penetrate through the window, right? And they're called ionizing radiation and ionize the gas, right, um, inside the meter. Or counter, okay, creating an electrical current. Or so creating ions, right, to carry the electrical current. 
So inside, right, there's the gas and then there's the wire. And we have, right, we have the positively charged and then we have negatively charged. And so um, as the ionizing radiation comes in, it ionizes the gas molecules. And then these moving ions can carry electrical current, right, which creates a signal on our meter, right? Because remember, moving ions carry electrical current. And we saw this idea, right, when we looked at ionic and covalent compounds, that when we dissolve ionic compounds in water, we call them electrolytes because they can carry, conduct electricity. So it's the same idea. Um, and remembering that alpha particles, right, no alpha detection. Okay. Now we'll look at another form, another way to measure um, radiation exposure, and that's with a film badge or a dosimeter. And so basically what happens is the, um, the film badge, the film, is in a case, right? So there's the film, and then it has a protective case. Okay, to avoid it from light, all right? But Right? The exposure, right? So the betas, the x rays, and the gamma rays, right? They can penetrate through the protective case, right? To expose the film. So, what happens when people wear film badges is like once a month you trade your film badge out and you get a new film badge. And so the degree of exposure is um, proportional to the amount of radiation. Okay, and this symbol here, right, proportional. And so they, um, they've developed a procedure for um, correlating the amount of exposure to the amount of radiation. And so if somebody's exposure is above the recommended limit, then um, steps are taken to find out where the exposure's coming from. Sometimes it just means a sample's been misplaced or some shielding has been lost. So we get that taken care of. Now let's look at this um, in terms of how we measure it with units, right? So there are um, three main things to consider. One is, how many radioactive emissions are occurring? Decays per second, also called DPS. And um, a common unit here is called the Curie, symbolized CI. So we can do a very literal definition, decays per second, or we'll, we'll see below we have the unit called the Curie, and that's related to how many radioactive decays are occurring per unit time. And then we could look at the absorbed dose. So that's the energy in rads absorbed, and then over the mass of tissue. Okay. And so this is where we'll use the unit, whoops, rad. Okay. Now, rads um, are, are very common. Make sure that everyone sees that's an A, right? So there's rad. Um, the thing about rads, though, is they um, do not consider penetration. And so we've seen on the previous page, right, that penetration is a big deal. And so then that led to this last unit called the REM. And we saw that before. We saw that in an earlier tutorial when we were looking at our exposures. And so this will be the absorbed dose but we're going to add a second term, right, per mass of tissue because this is a, okay, 
And what this is for, this allows, right, this is the adjustment for penetration. Right, so being exposed to an alpha emitter that's far away, right, there is versus a gamma emitter. So this is, we have this Q factor. All right, so um, the absorbed dose versus the effective dose. So really, if you want to, you could think of it as the effective dose is simply the absorbed dose times Q, right? And this adjusts for penetration, right, that varies with radiation source or radiation type. Okay, so now let's do an example here to help you appreciate this. All righty. So one rad of alpha, right, causes 20 times the damage of one rad of gamma rays, right? Because um, they have, if, if we were actually to ingest a gamma source, it would cause a lot more damage than, excuse me, if we were to absorb an alpha source ingested into our body, it would cause us a lot of damage. However, a gamma source, um, that because it can penetrate, it can go penetrate in, but it could also penetrate out. So we would actually have less damage inside us. We would be causing more damage to the world around us, but we would have less damage. With an alpha source inside us, we would absorb all the damage. That's the problem with rads, comparing alphas to gammas. However, REM takes that into account. So one rem of alpha causes the same damage as one rem of gamma. And um, there are a variety of units out there. So I've given you a few, but i just like for you to be exposed to all of them. So the amount of radioactive decay, right, that's the decays per second. It could also be a Becquerel or the Curie that we've talked about. So one Curie is 3.7 times 10 to the 10th decays per second. The absorbed dose, right, remember that does not allow for penetration differences, is the gray or the rad, radiation absor absorbed dose. And then the last one is the effective dose where we do allow for the different penetration penetration um, capacities, and there's the sievert or the rem, the Redkin equivalent to man. All right, and so now to put this all into context, let's look at the health effects of ionizing radiation. And what we can see is that it's going to depend on the intensity of the energy and the length of exposure. And then, of course, whether the radiation source is inside or outside our body. So to measure these kind of effects, we use something called the LD, and then we put a percent here, right? So the LD is the lethal dose, right, to kill, right, this X percent of population. All right, so, okay, so let's look at what happens with radiation. The first thing, so what we're gonna do is we're um, gonna look at acute, right? So this is like, this is a one time high exposure versus chronic, where we have a um, many small exposures over time. 
Okay, so we can see if we have an acute exposure in the 0.05 to 0.2 effective dose of sieverts, no problem. Um, if that raises up, we see that we start to get a, a decrease in our white um, blood cell count and we may get a headache or be more susceptible to infection. As the dosage starts to go up above one sievert, we see that people or um, individuals in the population will start to die 10%. There'll be nausea, hair loss, fatigue, continued white blood cell loss, and for men, um, temporary steril sterility. As the dose goes higher and higher, we can see that the amount of um, members of the population, a higher and higher group dies, percentage dies, and the symptoms become much more severe. If we get above an effective dose of 10 sieverts, then basically the entire population is dead in 14 days definitely something to respect about radiation. Um, with the chronic exposure, basically what happens is we end up with um, genetic mutations that can lead to cancer. Alrighty. And then what do, so what do we do to minimize our exposure? Shielding, right? Notice lead aprons when we go to get a dental x-ray or things, right? Lead is a great stopper. It can stop x-rays. We would need 10 centimeters to stop gamma, but um, shielding is an important um, way. And then distance. Um, the intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So what does that mean? That means, right, that if we double our distance um, away from a source, right, from a radioactive source, then um, our exposure is one fourth, right? Then what happens? Then we decrease our exposure, right, so it's um, a square, by 1 over 2 squared, or 1 fourth, right? So each time we double our distance, we reduce the dosage that we ex are exposed to by 1 quarter, right? So any time um, we're in the presence of a radioactive substance, we can use lead aprons and distance to protect us. Alrighty, so that concludes um, our tutorial on the biological effects of ionizing radiation and how we ended up with so many different types of units to describe the radiation, whether it's simply how many decays are occurring, what the overall energy is, or um, the REM, what's the actual health consequence, so we can compare alphas to gammas and that sort of thing. Please take some time now to um, reinforce your understanding with some homework questions.